Hey folks, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be answering a bunch of emails because I've had requests to do that. If you're new to my channel, I am obsessed with giant scale electric model aircraft. And uh, I've been doing it about somewhere between 12 and 15 years. I've been doing model aviation though, uh, radio control since about 1979. So yes, that does make me older than dirt. Um, a couple of things that I'm going to talk about in this video is um, a lot of emails uh, and private messages I get and uh, just basically comments that people have asked me to kind of dive into and just say how they affect me or how they, you know, help with my success or trolls and haters and all of that stuff. So, um, and what's really interesting is I probably get... Um, gosh, on my Gmail account, I probably get five or six emails a month asking if I would answer emails. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to answer your emails. And uh, here are a couple of gals just can't stand uh, it that I'm not doing more updates. And uh, this gal here, this is Ingrid. She absolutely is into twins. And she's like, come on, Dad, do more videos about twins. But tell us about the type of emails you're getting and the type of uh, questions you get asked and share with us how you answer those. And uh, and I know I'm having fun right now, everybody, because I'm just trying to blow up my channel a little bit. And this is Kate, and Kate's waiting for her instructor because she got inspired by watching my videos to become a really kick-ass pilot. So let's get this going, okay? So, um, and if you're my longtime follower, you know that I'm a little bit odd. I'm just a little bit strange. Because of the great success I've had is the reason I created this channel. And the success I've had is by just staying with it and not giving up. And I have have some really die-hard die followers that just love the fact that uh, when I started building giant scale airplanes, I ignored all the haters that said, you know, 188 inch wingspan plane is not going to fly, you know, uh, or actually it was my 197 inch wingspan plane that flew off 68 watts per pound. So this video is going to kind of address some of the emails that I thought were interesting the last, uh, I think, 60 days. Uh, when was the first time someone said uh, one of your planes wouldn't fly? And so... Boy, this was probably 13 years ago when I was on RC Groups, um, which I'm not on there much anymore if at all because it just become a place of trolls and BS. But, um, and it's really poorly moderated. I, I mean, but, and I, I don't mean to ever be negative. I shouldn't have said that. But I just, a lot of these forums are so poorly moderated, I just don't have time to go to them. So basically... I was finishing up my MSL-1, and that is my 197-inch, hang on a minute. It's the top left-hand corner airplane, my 197-inch, 72-pound airplane, electric. Um, I had this guy on RC Groups going, there's no way that's going to fly at 68 watt per pound. So then he says that his wife had gotten a cup of coffee and was walking by and saw the screen and saw it was 68 watts pound, and she said, well, even she knew it wouldn't fly. Well, that plane ended up with 1,350 flights on it, folks. So I thought it, it, it you know, it's, and, and look, I get people all the time reaching out to me saying, don't let the haters bother you. The haters have never bothered me. But I like to put them out there because I've had a lot of people thank me for talking about haters because they don't know how to deal with the haters. But that was the very first time somebody told me one of my airplanes wouldn't fly. Um, the next email, or next private message, this came from Gmail. Um, and that other one came from Gmail, too. This came from Gmail. What do you like to do most, build or fly? Um, the first probably third of my RC life was just loving to fly anything and everything of any size. And I would fly it until the wings would almost come off it. I, back in the day, would like try to knock over Coke cans on the runway flying by knife edge. So I think I'm an extremely accomplished pilot. But the most rewarding thing to me is to design an aircraft in my head, take it into a sketch, take it into AutoCAD, 
then building it in a 3D environment, which used to be 3ds Max, but now I build it in my Fusion 360 to make sure everything fits, and then physically cutting out the airplane and building it. I don't have a laser cutter. So when you think back of the B36 in the bottom right-hand corner, the MSL2 in the upper right-hand corner, and the MSL1 in the upper left-hand corner, I cut every bit of that wood out by hand on my bandsaw and then used a sander to rough the edges. I mean, take the rough cut in edges from the belt sand, I mean, from the pan saw into the piece of wood on my, my printed drawing. So, you know, I create my drawings, I print them, I cut them out, use that 3M adhesive and stick it to the wood lightly, cut it out. And I mean, I can get down to a 64th of an inch by hand and then I'm good to go. So building is probably the answer. But when I'm flying, that's the most rewarded thing. So it's really hard for me to say, if somebody held a gun to my head, said, what do you enjoy most? It may be the building now. Um, next question, this came from Facebook. When will your air bike be finished? That's my ultralight. As I've said in a couple of videos, everybody, I build I move around from projects depending on my funding. I don't use any of the money I make from my real job. Uh, it's kind of a, a deal me and my wife have because I've got a daughter going to a very expensive college, got mortgages, got retirement, got all this junk in life. And my wife didn't mind me buying like my TIG welder. Well, I shouldn't say my wife didn't mind. My wife and I are partners in everything. There's never ever her telling me what I can't buy or me telling her what I'm gonna buy. We discuss everything. So she's never had a problem with me buying like my lathe and mills and stuff like that because she knows those are investments. But she does have a problem when I start spending five or six thousand dollars on electronics for a plane that could crash. So that's one reason my YouTube, Patreon, and my sponsorships are so important right now because I'm almost to the point where I'm funding my hobby solely from that. But the air bike was not a, an inexpensive build. You know, the uh, Kawasaki engine for it was $4,000. Uh, well, with all this junk that goes with it. Making my airframe out of the 4130 chromoly steel, all the steel for that was $900. So that air bike sucked all of my funds. And I've sold a couple of planes over the last two years that goes into a model airplane fund. Well, I've been using that model airplane fund to build my ultralight. And I would guess my ultralight's going to be done next summer now because the fuselage is done, the engine's mounted, the tail feathers are done, the right wing's uh, ready to be covered. I'm sorry, that's not right. I got to cut the yellow on out. The left wing is getting ready to have um, the reinforcements epoxied into it. But then I got to buy the fabric and paint, and that's going to be about two grand. Uh, or eighteen hundred dollars, and I just don't have the funds for that. So I'm right now targeting next spring for the ultralight to be done. Uh, my air bike. The next question. Thanks for talking so much about haters, bullies, and and younger people. I, I it really helped my son. For him to see someone with your success rate have haters, made him see anyone can have haters. My son's had a really hard time flying drones and quads, being eleven years old as everybody's made fun of him. Well, you know, if we ever run into each other at the flying field and anybody makes fun of them, I'll uh, tell that person my opinion. Kids are our future, especially if there's a 10 or 11 year old kid uh, or 12 year old kid flying drones and quads. I mean, I remember when everybody hated helicopters and gliders, people. Um, rock on, please make longer videos, but I have a question. Why don't you have more videos of your planes flying? That came from YouTube. Because I, it's hard to hold a camera on my iPhone while I'm flying my plane. Many times when I fly my plane, um, I don't have an entourage with me like some of these other people that are, you know, superheroes or celebrities in the model aviation world. I just fly my big planes like I'm flying a trainer. So even if the flight line's full of people flying everything, I'll just go out and fly my plane like it's any other plane. And I just don't have an entourage with me that, that could videotape my airplane and then I could edit and put it on my YouTube. <clears throat> I'm hoping, well, I, I do have a rig where I put a GoPro on my head, but that doesn't zoom in or anything. And I look like an alien walking around with it. So I may do that one day. Um, the next question came from Facebook. What is the most frustrating part of designing your own aircraft? <clears throat> Without a doubt, 
it's easy for me to say this. I love to design in CAD. So imagine, how do I explain this? It's so easy to design something in CAD that can't be physically made, at least with the technology I own. I'll give you an ex explanation. I was designing a landing gear for an FW-190 for a PAL. And when I, when I printed out the drawings, I looked at it and I was like, I, I said a few MF words and I was like, just, you know, ah, I, this, I could never, A, cut that by hand, B, I can't mill anything that precise. And if I 3D printed the parts, they probably won't be strong enough. So when you're drawing in a 3D environment and you have a 440, uh, a number four hole that you're going to put a 440 screw into, <clears throat> you can zoom in on your CAD and that circle's this big <laughs> when you go to print that. So there has been, I would, I don't want to say hundreds of times, but at least 30 or 40 times where I have literally built an entire landing gear thinking it's ready to go. Uh, design and, and built, I shouldn't say built, I have designed the entire landing gear in CAD, moved it into three, Fusion 360 to make sure all the parts are going to work and articulate. Uh, uh, I mean, everything works, okay? Actuates, not articulate. And then I print out all the drawings and I look at it and I'm like, I'll, I can't make this. So I have to go back in there and then start realizing that, yes, that could be a 440 screw there, but I'm going to need at least a quarter inch diameter around that to have enough beef to be strong enough, but also that I could actually machine it and then drill it. To me, that's the most frustrating part. It's not the designing of the airframe. Anybody can download nowadays a drawing of the fuselage sections and all of that and trace that with AutoCAD and create an AutoCAD of an airframe. Or to be honest, if you've got the wing size right, the tail size right, and the moments between them right, CG right, it's going to fly. So designing the aircraft isn't the hardest part. It's, it's, it's designing the equipment that's going to go into it that you could actually make it. Okay. Can you do more videos on design, wing spars, and landing gears? That came from Gmail. Um, yes, I'll try to. The hardest thing about doing videos, trying to have a wide bandwidth of fans is I probably have a couple of hundred hardcore fans that are here to see how I design. I've had a lot of emails on, can, can I design a cylinder in Fusion 360 that I would 3D print for one of the radial engines I've designed? I could, but it would probably take about an hour to really explain what I'm doing. I mean, just to draw a cylinder jug for like uh, a Wright J5 uh, radial engine, I could probably draw that entire cylinder, just the cylinder, in 10 minutes in, in Fusion 360. But I want to be able to explain to you the different planes I'm using and the reason that I designed certain parts of it so it could be 3D printable. You don't want to design an entire cylinder and print it like this because you'd have to have support in between each of the cooling fins. So you want to design the cylinder and split it in half so those two halves could go on a building table, I mean on the printing table. <clears throat> so, it's hard to do design videos, not to mention I've done a lot of design videos and people ask, and I have 300 plus videos and I can't even remember where to go back and find some of my videos I've done and then give them the link, which I do do, I try to do that, but sometimes I'll talk about different things in the videos and unfortunately I didn't build a, create a catalog when I started doing my videos, so I might have a really nice part on designing uh, tricycle landing gear as a part of a video and I didn't name the video that so I don't even know where to go find it so um, that's just a learning scale on me okay um, here's kind of a hater uh, comment this was on YouTube your video on cube wing loading sucks cube wing loading makes no sense and has no place in full scale design well if you've ever watched the cube wing load video um, I say like a hundred thousand million times cube wing loading has nothing to do with full-scale aircraft it was created for model aviation only and it was created so designers like myself when I'm building a smaller airplane I know how that plane is going to perform in the air okay one of the little things that does get under my skin you know the haters that tell me I'm dumb or a dumbass or whatever that doesn't bother me <clears throat> But what bothers me is when somebody makes a comment about a video and they didn't watch the video. 
that does that that does um, flame me up a little bit. It's like don't waste my time. If you're not going to take the time to read the video, I mean watch the video, don't waste your time in, in, in posting something so irrelevant. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you might think of doing videos that people want to watch yeah this is another hater you need to do more videos on things people care about they came from gmail i re keep in mind when i get these on gmail i respond and say hey tell me what you want to watch and then they don't respond so i'm here to share my success i've always said that on my youtube so that you might have success on my youtube i don't do videos where i'm speculator i'm thinking that that might work because I've been burned that way. I've had a couple of people say, oh no, this will work, do this, this, and this. And I go out and spend a hundred bucks, do it, and then it's a piece of crap. And then I realize they never did this. This would have never worked. So I only try to share with you things I've done that have worked. So if that's not within that bandwidth of you wanting to watch, um, you don't have to watch my channel. Oh, this is another really funny. So I did a, one of my highest view, not the highest, but one of my highest viewed videos was, why is it so hard to land? And I've actually had a lot of real aeronautical engineers and CFIs and people reach out and say, this is an excellent video. So here's the thing that I thought was interesting. When this person wrote, landing is not hard. Yeah, landing is not hard with a big exclamation point. So at least that's the way I see it visually. So, I went to this person's channel and all they fly is foamies. That's all they fly. So, for you, landing may not be hard. If you would have watched the video where I talk about the full spectrum of aircraft you might want to be landing. You know, when you fly a Zeroli F4 that weighs 40 pounds, it's a lead sled pig. That is going to land a lot different than a foamy. Okay, so the reason I created that video is I used to do a lot of people's test flights and they would always say to me, why can you land my airplane so much better than me, Dag? And I am a full scale pilot. So maybe that helped me think about when you're a full scale pilot, when you enter the downwind, you set your engine to a certain RPM, you configure the airplane, maybe one notch of flaps, you hit a target airspeed. Then when you're turning base to final, you, you're, and these are all on the checklist. When I fly model airplanes, I am completely configured in the downwind to land. Gears down, flaps are at landing setting. I've got the airplane trimmed, and normally I mix trim with flaps and elevator. So that when I'm turning my, my downwind to base and then base to final, I'm not having to look for switches or feel for switches. I'm not having to think about anything but landing that airplane. So when you have a more controlled approach, I will guarantee you, you will have a more successful landing. But a lot of people want to pull that power all the way back and the airplane is decelerating really quick because it's draggy. And then when they go to flare, they plop it on. I always land with just a little bit of power. It might only be one or two notches, but I'm never fully idle with any of my airplanes when I'm landing them. So landing can be hard depending on the airframe. Uh, any video over three minutes I stop watching. Waste of time. Why don't you do shorter videos? Gmail. Um, I've been experimenting with this, but it's hard to do a video about a subject like landing gear or uh, answering emails about flaps and do that in three minutes. Now, if it's an update on a build, I've tried to do the two minute updates and boy, did I get a lot of flack that, that people didn't like that two minute update. I had one person say, I love it, I'm subscribing now, and that might be you for all I know. <laughs> but, um, and I hope this isn't taken wrong. I'm not here to try to please you all. I'm here to try to share stuff with you that you will find interesting enough to like and subscribe, okay? So I think it was the great um, uh, James Tiberius Kirk said, or it might have been Spock, that the needs, needs of the many will always outweigh the needs of the few or the one. <laughs> okay, please make more videos about kids and airplanes. I love your videos. I love your commitment to getting youth involved in model aircraft. This is fascinatingly exciting, YouTube. I am trying to do more videos where 
I'm, I'm trying to actually, I, I don't go to the flying field enough, but I'm trying to figure out, and I may do this at Ceph next year, uh, which is that big electric flying I go to. <clears throat> I'm trying to get around kids with this little two channel airplane I have and do a video where maybe in 15 or 20 minutes I can get a young kid. And I may do it out in my front yard with one of the neighborhood kids. But I would just want to show that once you put a model airplane radio in a kid's hand and fly them, let them fly it, a lot of them will get addicted to it like it's crack. <laughs> so I want kids addicted to model aviation, not these role-playing video games where they're seeing how many people they can kill in a mall. Okay? Um, I know you don't make... I know, oh, I, I know why you don't make more videos about the AMA. It's because they suck. You need to be honest with the world. And that actually came from a private message through Facebook. I reached out to this person, and all they wanted to do is argue with me about how bad the AMA is. And that's Academy Model Aeronautics. Well, look, people, there are going to be people that would look at a supermodel and go, eh, her butt's too flat. Okay, there's going to be somebody who's always going to complain. Do I think the AMA is perfect? Absolutely not. Do I think that the AMA has done some things that probably wasn't the smartest they could have done this last 20 years? Maybe. But are they a fascinating... I don't want to say fascinating. Are they a... I'm stuck on fascinating after that person put fascinating in that email. Um... Are, are they a, a, a very important need? Yes. Because they're the biggest community-based organization right now that we have that with all of its members can have a loud enough voice to make sure that model aviation is still a part of our airspace. Okay? That's only one of like 50 things, though, that they're good at. When you think of all the contests they do, all the safety stuff they do, when, when you think of everything the AMA does, there's so much going on in the background that you have no idea that um, if I had to give them a score, I would give them an A or a B plus. And the reason I do that is because there was a, 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 a period of time, and even today, I feel like they're not wanting to involve enough youth. En enough youth. It's gotten a lot better. I remember 20 years ago, one of the people at the AMA, an important person, said to me, the youth don't mean anything. Almost all modelers are over 26 years old. And, you know, I just thought, you know, what a crock of crap. Now, sure, most modelers, you know, don't start really spending money in model aviation until they are married, have a, you know, have a house, and they can start to afford the hobby. So it's kind of like we fly up until we're 19 or 20. Once we move out of mom and dad's house, we have to have a real life, so we run out of money. Then we get back into model aviation at 26 or 27. But that's not true nowadays. We can get little quads, little drones. We can get little park flyers pretty inexpensively compared to video games that kids are flying. I mean, building. I mean, not flying, but video games kids are killing everybody with. So if you look at how much money people are spending or a mom and dad spending on a video game console, get them a little two or three channel radio plane just to see if they're going to like it, give me a break. The youth is our future. Um, and the AMA is not the bad guys. They've actually gotten a lot, lot better than they have in the past. Uh, next email, this came from YouTube. I can't believe you don't have more YouTube subscribers. What's going on? Your channel is the greatest I've ever found. If you have to, do more clickbait, please. So, and I did a video just in the past where somebody accused me of clickbait. If you don't know what clickbait is, it's when there's images. And there's clickbait in this video, folks. There's images that will draw millions of people, hopefully, in the video to click on it. And then they decide if they want to watch the video. But... Anything that I'm putting in my video that could be termed clickbait actually goes with the theme of model aviation, okay? Can you make more in-depth videos when you set up the motor system on your giant cargo airplane? Um, yes, I can. If you haven't been following me, I'm building an airplane called the Fra Emma Stein, and it's got an 8-foot-long cargo bay, 220-inch wingspan. It's got two tractor engines, two pusher engines, well, motors. Uh, they're hacker motors, a 60 dash. 16 L's, I think. Um, and it is kind of a bizarre motor setup because I've got the ESCs and batteries in the nose of the airplane. And 
I'm going to be more a little bit more less clear than mud, okay? So basically is you want your battery to the ESC to be as short as possible. And then from the ESC to your motor, your electronic speed control to your motor can be up to a pretty long length. But you got to do testing like I did because the believe it or not, when that motor goes to start, that ESC is looking at the timing and the rotation. And if you get those wires too long, the motor can chatter. So you need to experiment in one foot increments and you need to really do a lot of really slow moving the throttle up trying to get chatter. But I'm going to dive in really deep on that video on that. Okay. And so that's that. That's that's all the emails I wanted to answer right now, folks. Um, I don't want to bloviate, but I would say 80% of the emails I get uh, are no, actually probably 90 are positive emails people loving my channel, loving what I'm doing, loving my builds, um, loving my quirky personality. But um, like I said, I'm not here trying to please everybody. I'm trying to share my success, my building techniques, my design techniques to promote people to build more airframes. You know, somebody made a statement five or six years ago um, about why I didn't like the flight test group more because I never do videos on them. Um, I love what flight test is doing. I mean, I'm obsessed with their, the way they do their little planes that you can hot melt glue together and get them in the air. Um, their flight fest, I think they have is an incredible event. Um, I guess the reason I don't talk about them a lot is I've never built one of their planes. Okay. So I, like I say, I try to share what I've done. I don't like to speculate. Um, I haven't been to the Flight Fest and I haven't built one of their airplanes. But by all means, I think the flight test people are rock stars. I think it's one of the greatest things for model aviation. I think it's brought in a lot of people that are like that 16 to 25 or maybe even 30 group into you know putting together an airframe that's not a kit or an ARF. Okay. So uh, that's it, everybody. So as you know, I always end these with like begging you to get youth into model aviation, but I think I've kind of covered that by answering some emails. So I'm just going to wrap this up. I will see you next time. I do have a remote ID video coming up and I do have a video coming up on S bus because I've gotten a lot of questions about the Futaba S bus and setting up multiple servos. And that's it for now. So rock on everybody. Have a fabulous day and I'll see you next time. Be safe and be nice to each other and get a kid into the air. Rock on. Bye.